Good morning. Welcome to worship at Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Connor, and I'm the pastor in this community, and I'm so glad that you're connected with worship today. Whether you're joining us online or you're here in person, we are here to worship God on the second Sunday of Easter. Yes, Easter is a season, and we're glad to enter it with you today. As we begin, we want to give a particular welcome to those who may be connecting for the very first time and give you a special welcome and invite you to get more connected in the life of the church. One of the best ways to do that is to sign up for our weekly email newsletter. You can go to our website, share your name and email address. We'll send an update every week with upcoming opportunities for you to connect with others and grow in your love of God. We invite you to do that, and we're so glad that you're connected today. As we begin our worship service here, we want to make space for those that are in the worship center uh, to greet one another. If you're online, you might just drop a comment, let us know that you're here or where you're worshiping from today. And for those of you that are here, take a moment to introduce yourself to someone that you don't know or aren't as familiar with, and then remain standing as we join in our Susanna Wesley welcome. Will you please stand and welcome your neighbors this morning? Good morning. Would you please continue to stand for our Susanna Wesley welcome? Let's take a moment to reflect on the power of gathering in the Lord's name. These words set the stage for our journey as a congregation, guiding us toward a future of unity and spiritual growth. As we come together, we embrace the teachings of Jesus and the practices that bring us closer to God and our neighbors. Our ultimate goal is to create a community that welcomes all, where everyone feels valued and supported. So let's affirm our commitment to this vision. You'll find the words on the screen. Please join me in speaking them aloud. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. We are Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. All people are welcome with no exceptions. You can be any are. You can be any way you are, and you are loved. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to continue standing and join in singing our opening song. Darkness high. 
thee. Though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see. You may be seated. And as you're seated, I invite you to join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Dear God, our protector and refuge, we come to worship you with sincere hearts. Help us to turn away from the idols that surround us and keep you always before us. We praise you for your counsel and instruction and for guiding us on the path of life. You bring us joy and keep us secure. We declare that you are Lord and we have no good apart from you. Thank you for your love and grace. Amen. Listen to God's word for us from the Acts of the Apostles. A reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 14, and then 22 through 32. As Peter stood with the other 11 apostles, he raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man whose credentials God proved through, to you through miracles, wonders, and signs, which God performed through him among you. You yourselves know this, in accordance with God's established plan and foreknowledge, he was betrayed. You, with the help of wicked men, had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip, since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says this about him. I foresaw that the Lord was always with me, because he is at my right hand. I won't be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope because you won't abandon me to the grave nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will fill me with happiness. Brothers and sisters, I can speak confidently about the patriarch David. He died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this very day. Because he was a prophet, he knew that God had promised him with a solemn pledge to seat one of his descendants on the throne. Having seen this beforehand, David spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he wasn't abandoned to the grave, nor did his body experience decay. This Jesus God raised up. We are all witnesses to that fact. I invite you to join in the responsive reading today from Psalm 16. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. I will bless the Lord who advises me. Even at night, I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I will the Lord before me. I will not stumble because he is on my That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety. You teach me the way of life. In 
listen to God's word for us from the New Testament, a reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. On account of his vast mercy, he has given us new birth. You have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You have a pure and enduring inheritance that cannot perish, an inheritance that is presently kept safe in heaven for you. Through his faithfulness, you are guarded by God's power so that you can receive the salvation he is ready to reveal in the last time. You now rejoice in this hope, even if it's necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. This is necessary so that your faith may be found genuine. Your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be destroyed even though it, it is itself tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result in praise, glory, and honor for you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you don't see him now, you trust him and so rejoice with a glorious joy that is too much for words. You are receiving the goal of your faith, your salvation. I invite you to stand as you're able to listen for God's word for us from the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Listen for God's word for us. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the other disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my fingers in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand in his side, I won't believe. After eight days... His disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see me and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll, but these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. You may be seated. At least earlier this week, it felt like the frosty, frostiness of winter was beginning to fade. Now, today, it's a little bit different story, but back when it was a warmer a few days ago, you begin to see the first signs of spring emerge, and I found myself venturing out into our front yard garden to begin to prepare the soil and the garden for a new season of growth. I've got my gardening gloves, I've got my tools, I'm ready to clear away the remnants of last year's plants, re-secure the landscape fabric until the soil get it ready to go for the season ahead. And this process of cleaning up the garden and preparing the earth for planting is a lot of work sometimes, but it is also one that's filled with hope and anticipation. Just as I invest time and effort in creating a, a place for these plants to grow, the theme from our text from 1 Peter today encourages us to cultivate our faith and rejoice in love even in times of suffering. By doing so, we can experience the gift of new life that comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, planting the seeds of hope and joy in our hearts and in the lives of those around us. In this spring season of renewal and growth, I'm excited to begin our new sermon series, A Living Hope. 
Through this series, we will explore the truth that death is not the end of the story. We'll take a closer look at the nature of this living hope and learn how to recognize it every day, just as we recognize the first signs of spring in the world around us. I invite you to join me in discovering this life-changing truth that Jesus' resurrection brings us life. We can have a living hope found in that, real, in that reality. Today, we'll take a closer look at the letter from 1 Peter that we really don't read very much. We read just a little bit in the church oftentimes. This letter seems to be hidden at the end of the New Testament, but it has a powerful message for us today. It was written during a time uh, when the early church faced many dangers, and believers had to be cautious about how they practiced their faith. What were they going to share with their neighbors? How were they going to invite other people? They could be arrested or persecuted or even killed for practicing their faith. They lived in constant fear, and sometimes their neighbors looked at them with suspicion. Now, these early Christians were hardworking model citizens in many ways. They did the jobs that no one else wanted to do. They cared for the dead. They treated their bodies with respect. However, it seemed that some of the ways that they practiced, when word got out about them, it seemed a little bit strange and frightening to other people. In such a difficult time, questions began to arise in these early faith communities. Should we go underground? Do we need to hide and blend in? Do we need to act as our neighbors do, like everyone else? Would it be safer to pretend that this message of being saved by grace through faith isn't actually true for us? Should we set aside the more challenging teachings of Jesus, like praying for our enemies and those who persecute us? Should our faith move inside, inside our hearts, inside our heads? Does it really need to move out into our everyday life? Should it be something personal that keeps us safe and warm and feeling good about ourselves, but maybe sets aside our actions in the world? This was the question that Peter set out to answer in his letter. Now, some theologians would say, or some people feel that perhaps the apostle Peter didn't actually write this letter. They argue about the timing and the vocabulary, the style in which it's written, that maybe they don't line up with what we know about Peter. But even if it wasn't, Even if Peter didn't precisely write these words himself, it still has a message that sounds like something that he would say. Peter had experienced fear and doubt himself, and he was the perfect person, perhaps, to address this question. He had professed his loyalty to Jesus with great conviction, but then when things got tough, he ran away. Peter boasted about his steadfastness, but himself denied knowing Jesus when he was confronted with it in the holy week of, last, of Jesus' last week on earth. So what does Peter have to say about keeping our faith hidden during challenging times? Well, actually, he says, well, absolutely not. We should not hide our faith. We should live it out in our everyday lives, even when it's challenging. And perhaps taking a closer look at the entire letter can help us grasp his answers, but we can get a sense of Peter's message just from these few verses. Peter tells us that we have been given a new birth and a new life. Not because anything that we have done or earned on ourselves, we haven't done anything to deserve it, but because of Jesus' resurrection. This gift of life is now ours. It's yours and it's mine. And and it's as sure as the air that we breathe, the light that we see, and the hope that we can feel in our hearts. And this gift changes the way that we see ourselves and the world around us. The only appropriate response to this fantastic gift is to rejoice We see that in the psalm. Psalm 16 shares a similar message, saying that joy is found in God. We can find this joy by obeying God, finding our place in God's kingdom, following Jesus' counsel, and being filled with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Trusting in God's constant presence and the blessings that we receive through our relationship with God can bring us joy. As the psalmist writes in Psalm 16, verse 9, that's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety. Peter quotes this psalm when he's writing in his letter, but he doesn't stop there. He also tells us to rejoice even when we suffer or face difficult times. Now, at first, this idea might seem difficult at the least and impossible if we're honest, but Peter insists that it makes sense. 
since we are alive in Christ and connected to something that's eternal, anything that can happen to us in any moment of time can just pass, is, is something that will eventually end. The worst thing that we can imagine or that we're walking through right now will not be the end of all things. God's love and grace is at the end of all things. And the things that scare us may not actually be able to harm our souls or break us down. We are alive in Christ and that can change everything. Peter's message is one of love. Jesus loves us so profoundly that his death and resurrection save us. And now we are called to love others just like Jesus did. This transforming and powerful and life-giving love. Salvation is the only word that really captures what Jesus has done for us. Through the love of God and Jesus Christ, we are saved to love others in the same way that Jesus did. To live in the way that Jesus did, serving and offering himself as a part of God's kingdom. This kind of love is something that's worth celebrating. I can just almost imagine Peter with a big smile on his face, his rough hands from fishing, giving us a hearty pat on the back and saying, welcome to the party. I'm so glad that you're part of those that are following Jesus and encouraging us to rejoice with, uh, rejoice with indescribable and glorious joy, even in the face of difficult times. But how does this actually work? How do we actually apply this message of rejoicing and love in our lives? I want to offer a few suggestions to help us live out Peter's teachings this week. The first is to cultivate gratitude. One way to rejoice, even in difficult times, is to practice gratitude. Take a moment each day to reflect on the blessings in our lives, both big and small. Because the truth is that even if we're facing difficulties, there's something, something that we might be able to be grateful for. It can help us shift our focus from only what is not going how we want to what we might give thanks for. We can serve other people. Jesus showed us the importance of serving others through his actions and through his teachings. Find ways to help those in need in our community. You might show up to the Nehemiah Assembly here in a few weeks to speak for justice. You might offer a listening ear, uh, listening ear to a friend or share someone um, that's in need of encouraging word. Serving others not only brings joy to their lives, but also to ours as well. And we can share our faith. Sometimes we might find it difficult to share our faith with others, but I want to encourage you to share it in ways that make sense. You can engage in conversations about what you believe and listen to the perspective of others. We recognize that we don't always get it right, that there are things that we may not truly understand, and that in any situation where people disagree, there's likely truth on both sides. Sharing our faith can help deepen our own understanding and can be a source of encouragement for others. We can pray for our enemies. Now, this is tough. <laughs> But Jesus taught us to pray for those who persecute us and those that who might oppose us. It's challenging, but it can help us develop empathy, a, a forgiveness, and love for those that we might find difficult to love. And finally, just to encourage you to study the Bible, to regularly read and study the Scriptures, to grow in our own understanding of God. It can help us build a strong foundation for our faith, can give us guidance in challenging times, remind us that God is always with us no matter what happens. By living out these and using our five spiritual practices, we can embrace this message of rejoicing and love that Peter shares with us. We can experience the joy and fullness of life that comes from our relationship with Christ, regardless of our circumstances. And as we grow in our own faith, as we take the next step, wherever that might be for you, we can become a source of encouragement and hope for other people. Others can see God in you, God's love experienced through your words and actions, sharing the love and joy that we find in Jesus. The good news is that through Jesus' resurrection, we've been given the gift of new life, and we can share the joy of this gift, even in the face of suffering, as we trust in God's presence with us always, in love that never ends, and the promise that we can be with God forever. So I invite you to cultivate gratitude to serve other people, to share your faith, to pray for your enemies even, and study the scriptures as a way to live out the message of rejoicing and love in First Peter. This letter may be tucked in away at the end of the New Testament, but it holds a powerful message for us today. Just as we invest time and effort in our gardens or our yards uh, or the outside where we live, preparing the soil for new growth, we are called to cultivate our own faith and live out the gift of new life that comes through Jesus' resurrection by rejoicing even in our sufferings or even in the midst of them or in spite of them, we can demonstrate the transformative power of God's love in Jesus Christ and the hope that he offers to the world. 
So I invite you to join me in Peter's invitation to join the party to celebrate this joy of a relationship with Christ. You can be a source of love and hope and encouragement to others, reflecting the love that Jesus has shown to us. And just like a well-tended garden, our lives, yours and mine, can fill with blossoming fruits of faith and love nourished by the living hope we find in Jesus. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for the living hope we have in you. Help us to say yes to following Jesus and embracing a life of faith and love and hope. Empower us to inspire others to discover your love and join us in the journey with Christ. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Would you join me by standing and singing our next hymn, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Hail the day that sees him rise, alleluia, to his throne above the skies, alleluia. Christ awaits to mortals given. Alleluia. Reascends his native heaven. Alleluia. There the glorious triumph waits. Alleluia. Lift your heads, eternal grace. Alleluia, Christ hath conquered death and sin, Alleluia, take the King of glory in, Alleluia, see the heaven its Lord receives, Alleluia, Yet he loves the earth he leaves. Alleluia. Though returning to his throne. Alleluia. Still he calls the world his own. Alleluia. <clears throat> he lifts his hands above. of love, alleluia, hark his gracious lips bestow, alleluia, blessings on his church below, alleluia. You may be seated. As our seated, I want to draw your attention to some up upcoming opportunities to connect in the life of Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. Next Sunday is Native American Ministry Sunday. This is a day in which we receive a special offering along with United Methodists around the globe that goes to support Native American ministries and scholarships both here and across our denomination. Pastor Holly Tapley will be leading us in worship. I'm grateful for your leadership. We won't want to miss next Sunday as we celebrate Native American Ministry Sunday and hear from Reverend Holly. Also, uh, coming up on Friday, April 28th, is a family potluck, potluck and game night. We invite you to bring uh, a dish to share, um, a game to play with other people. We'll gather here in the church building um, and just build communities together. So we invite you to be here. We'll start at 6 o'clock um, here on Friday, April 28th. And then coming up on the very 1st of May is our Nehemiah Action Assembly. This is the highlight of the year for our justice work that combines with other congregations across Shawnee County as we seek justice and to move our community to be a little bit more like God's kingdom. You can show up. It's at Lee Arena. Uh, registration starts at 545. The event starts at 7. We invite you to come, show up, and be a part of what God is doing in our community in that way. 
We also want to remind you about our five spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. And today, we invite you to remember about sharing our faith, to start a regular practice of sharing our faith and inviting others to find a Christian community through Susanna Wesley. You can share on your own by letting someone know that you're a Christian five times a month. Just a simple invitation about sharing about what you're doing the weekend and perhaps even inviting them to connect with you. To share with others by inviting someone to connect with worship five times a year. A great opportunity to connect with someone online, invite them to show up with you here in person. We invite you to worship, study, serve, give, and share as we all seek to become more like Jesus. We come now to the time in our service in which we pause for a time of prayer. And during this time of prayer, there's a variety of ways that we're going to invite you to do that. We're going to begin with a few moments of silence, some quiet time where you can listen for the way that God is speaking to you and that you might offer your own prayers to God. You're welcome to pray with your eyes open. In a few moments, you'll see on the screen names of individuals and families that we're keeping in our prayers for a variety of reasons. You can pray for them today and in the days ahead. You're also welcome to pray with your eyes closed as a way of focusing and connecting on the way that God is speaking to you. If you'd like to come forward, there's an opportunity to do that. There's candles here at the front. You can light a candle as a symbol of your prayers, as a reminder to be the light of Christ, or perhaps in honor or memory of someone. And then I'll guide us together in a prayer to close our time and continue with the service. So I invite you to connect with God, to breathe in God's Spirit, and join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Oh God, as we look around us and see the beauty of spring beginning to break in, we can't help but feel grateful for your creation. We hear the sweet songs of birds returning and see fields and gardens that will soon be planted. We give you thanks for all of these signs of new life. But the most incredible sign of new life that we celebrate during this season is the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. His death filled us with sadness and despair, but His resurrection has given us hope and promise of life with you here on earth and life forever in your kingdom. We believe that the resurrection means that justice will prevail, that light will overcome darkness, and that love will conquer death. And we pray that you give us the grace to live out this promise and this hope and this trust by following your example in our daily lives. We want to be good neighbors to everyone that we meet, and especially the poor and those living on the margins of our community. As we celebrate Easter, we ask that you change our lives and hearts so we can be messengers of joy and hope to all those around us. We offer this prayer through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. As we've taken a moment to check in with God in prayer, I invite you to check in. Let us know that you're connected with worship today. If you're online or you're here in person, you can use the Church Center app to check in and let us know that you're connected with worship. If you haven't downloaded the app on your mobile device, you can use the form at our website to share that you're connected. Or if you're here in person, take that yellow Connect card from the pew in front of you, fill it out, and drop it off at the welcome table in the clear box as you depart today. We also want to invite you to consider giving to support our ministry plan. Our ministry fund goes to support um, all our ministries in the life of the church. You can text any dollar amount to 84321. Again, you can use that Church Center app to give one time or set up a recurring gift. 
If you're here in person, you can use the offering envelope in the pew in front of you um, and drop it off in the basket at the welcome table on your way out. Thank you for your generosity and giving. As you take a moment to do those things, we invite our choir to come forward to sing our special music, and we're going to invite you to join in as well. I invite you to join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving and the Lord's Prayer. Gracious God, thank you for giving your never-ending love and kindness toward us. You always welcome us back with open arms, no matter how many times we may falter. Your mercy provides us with hope and strength to keep going. We give thanks for your endless love. In the name of Jesus, 
we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you're able for our closing song today, Thine Be the Glory. Go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.